What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and I'm back with another Helldivers 2 video. And in this one, I'm gonna do an updated stratagem tier list to include the brand new heavy machine gun and quasar laser cannon. But first, download Jumpstone Legends, a mobile RPG puzzle match game. Use the link in the description to start with free stuff, including a bonus hero. All right, so heading into April of 2024, we've had a couple of nerfs to stratagems as well as boosts to others and a couple of brand new ones. So of course, it's time for an updated list and I'm just gonna dive right in. This is my uh, grading scale that I use from S tier to C tier. Um, instead of D, I put niche because I don't think every weapon is completely useless except for the hell no ones that I put the, at the very end. But I think that there's a few weapons that uh, can be used in very certain circumstances. So I would grade those as niche. Of course, the hell no ones, those are ones that like actively hurt you or your team or are just a waste of time and space. So uh, let's start with uh, the machine gun. And we're just going to go in order of how they appear in Helldivers 2. Um, I think that the uh, machine gun is uh, a sort of good all around type of weapon, especially for the newer players, but it does take a long time to reload. So I'm putting that in the C tier. Uh, next up, we're gonna take a look at the anti-material rifle. And this is a really good one from long range. Uh, and in fact, uh, I've found that in Helldivers 2, there's not a ton of really great long range weapons. And I tend to be uh, a style of player that likes to hang back and pick off uh, opponents and just kind of keep my distance. I've been that way in almost every shooter game. Um, and I do like this one a lot. So I am going to go ahead and uh, rank this one at B tier. It's not really great if you're getting swarmed or you're, you're in close combat, which happens a lot. As much as you try to keep your distance, it's just impossible in this game. Um, next up, we are going to take a look at the Stalwart. And this is a lot like the machine gun. Uh, except it comes with a lot of ammo, much less time to reload, and it is just a little bit more mobile. So I'm going to put this in B tier as well. Um, in fact, I think it's bordering on A tier, but it's just not quite there. There's some better options for that, uh, but it's really, really great if you're a new player. Try to get that one. Uh, next up, we're going to look at the expandable or <laughs> expendable anti-tank. <laughs> and this one um, I think is underrated. Now I know that people know this one is good, but this is better than people give it credit for because the cooldown is so short. It is only 70 seconds and you get unlimited uses. So you can run through the whole map and call down dozens of these, not just for yourself, but for your teammates. And they take out some of the biggest stuff in the game. So for that reason, I'm probably going to shock some people, but I'm going to put it in the S tier because I have found, especially if you're trying to run solo or you're trying to run those higher tier uh, types of matches, this one comes in very, very handy. You can kill almost everything in the map with this one combined with the other weapons you choose to bring. So that's why I'm putting it there. Uh, next up, we're going to take a look at the recoilless rifle. And this one is powerful it can really take out some of the bigger things in the game, but it does require a backpack uh, for loading. And you can see that it's best used or, or actually you really need a teammate in order to maximize the use for this. So I think that unfortunately, like I, I almost want to put it in niche, but it is a little better than niche. Um, it's just, if you're playing with your friends, maybe you can get someone to use it for you. But if you're playing with randos, you're not going to find too many people who are going to help you out with that. Now the flamethrower, this is one that just got boosted in the game and it is amazing. Um, it can really take out like even chargers, which is incredible. You just aim this thing there and it can take it out in like a half tank to three quarters of a tank, uh, which is really, really good. Um, however, uh, there is a downside to this and that is that most people who use it seem to uh, light their teammates on fire too. And also look at all that fire that it leaves around on the battlefield. Um, if a player's not paying attention and they're backing up while they're trying to shoot uh, enemies, uh, even, even if you have the best intentions of not burning them with it, <laughs> they might walk right into the fire and die. So for that reason, even though this is probably overhyped right now, a lot of people are probably gonna put it in S and A tier. I'm gonna put it in B tier 
simply because in real life, in matches, people seem to just be burning their teammates with it. You know what I mean. If you've been playing, there's always one guy um, who just can't help but friendly fire with stuff like this. All right, let's take a look at the auto cannon up next. Um, and this is another one that has a backpack. And if you can have a teammate help you with it, um, then uh, it can be really, really powerful. Um, and uh, it it can take out some of the, the biggest, most heavily armored things in the game. It's almost necessary if you can get somebody to help you with it. Uh, so I'm going to put it up here in A tier because it's just it's just a bit better than the recoilless rifle, I think. Um, and uh, when you play with it, you'll see why. But um, I can't put it in S tier just because it is a little difficult to maneuver around with it and use it appropriately. I mean, look, in this video here, they're standing still and shooting at things. That doesn't happen in this game. You get swarmed. Um, and so I'm actually tempted to have it down here in B tier. Uh, but just because it is one of the few weapons that can take out some of the biggest things in the game, um, I'm putting an a, a tier. All right, now one of the brand new ones, the heavy machine gun. Uh, this one is, I mean, obviously like the machine gun, going to be able to just spray at opponents like the stalwart too. Although you're going to be less mobile with this one. Um, and um, it's going it, to, it's, it still doesn't have enough ammo like the machine gun. Um, and obviously you're not going to be able to, to run around the map. You're just, you're going to have to stay put, probably crouch, uh, to keep your accuracy, maybe even lay down on the ground. I could see this potentially having uses, uh, towards the end of a match when you're just trying to hunker down and stave off enemies. So, um, I'm going to actually put this one in the C tier, uh, because, um, and, and I know the machine gun is here too, but they have different uses. The machine gun is going to be a little more mobile. You can take it around the map. This one I think is going to be more defensive where you just have to stay put. So that's why I'm putting them both there. They have similar uses. Um, next up, let's talk about the rail gun. This one's interesting too, because uh, there was a time where this was maybe seen as the best stratagem in the game or one of the best weapons in the game, um, but no longer because it was nerfed. Um, not that it's a bad weapon. It's certainly not a bad weapon. Uh, but it, it requires a very specific and skilled type of player to be using it. Obviously, it can be really powerful, as you're seeing in the video here. It takes down big opponents, but it also, you can kill yourself. Because the only way to use this is not on its regular mode, which a lot of newer players are not going to realize. You can switch the mode of the weapons. Um, you got to turn it to unsafe in order to use this and take down some of the biggest opponents in the game. So because of the skill level required and how it got nerfed, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in the B tier. Uh, and that will probably surprise a lot of people who got into this and just started looking at the first tier lists that are out there because the early ones, this was one of the better weapons in the game, um, but not anymore. Uh, the spear. Let's talk about the spear because this one's interesting. This is a longer range weapon. You heard me say I, I really like longer range weapons and it can take down like bile spewers and, and tanks uh, and, and things like this too. But as of right now, I think this weapon's kind of broken in, in a bad way. Um, it doesn't really lock on to opponents like you want it to. Um, it is extremely accurate when it does lock on, uh, but it's just not doing a good job right now at what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put the spear in niche because you can use it, but you got to not get near enemies. And how often does that happen in this game? Um, you got to be hanging around and back and look, it, it, you need another teammate there with you too. I mean, it's just unfortunately too slow, I think. Um, but I, I can't say hell no to it because there are going to be some matches where this is useful. All right, next up, the Orbital Gatling Barrage. Um, you know, some of these orbitals I'm, I'm not huge fans of because again, you get those players in the game. Even if you're skilled at using it, the, uh, most people, <laughs> maybe not most people, but a lot of people um, don't aim these things right or use them right. Th this one fires kind of randomly. It's not as powerful as other ones and, and, and people tend to kill their teammates with stuff like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this one in niche because it doesn't seem to do as much as I would like it to do. Um, next up, we're going to look at the orbital air burst strike. This is another one. It's very, very similar to the Gatling barrage. I don't think I need to say any more about that. Um, next up is the orbital 120 millimeter uh, HE barrage. And um, this one can be fine in small spaces. Um, 
but I'm, I'm gonna put this one in niche again as well for the same reason as the prior ones. But I've been playing with people who call this down when the team is getting swarmed, but they call it down on top of their own teammates way too often. Um, and most of the time I find my myself asking my teammates to stop using this because <laughs> we're trying to accomplish a mission. When you call it down on top of your mission, you're not completing your mission as quickly. There's just much better things to be doing with your time. Now the um, Orbital 380 millimeter uh, HE barrage, very, very similar, but as you can see in this, uh, video right here, it covers a much, much larger area. I think this one does have more use. And I think this is for when you're approaching a very, very large nest, um, or uh, as you can see here, a base where you need to just try and take out as much of the enemies as possible from a distance. So I don't think this one's quite as niche. I'm going to put it in B tier. Uh, you cannot let your uh, allies be running in there while you set this off. So you better be talking and communicating when you're playing so that you can let people know when you're sending this one in and your teammates don't just run in there. Drives me crazy when I'm playing matches and people call stuff like this in and nobody alerts you to it. <laughs> um, but it can be good for clearing out large spaces. Now let's talk about the orbital walking barrage. Um, this one, uh, it's, it's similar to the others um, that I had just talked about in that it's kind of like a, a niche like not super accurate, uh, but good for taking care of large groups. Um, I, I think it does do a little bit better job than a couple of the others we'll talk, we're, I, I was just talking about here, so I'm gonna sneak it into the C tier, but it it is, I think in my opinion, almost niche as well. Now let's talk about one of the best stratagems in the game, the orbital laser. And I'm sure you've seen other players playing with this. If you haven't played with it yourself, this thing, um, does damage to every every big enemy on the board and little enemy and kills everything in its path, uh, including your own allies. <laughs> so you do have to be careful of that. But it's so big and it's so obvious that your allies can actually do a pretty good job of staying away from it. Um, but it's just such a catch-all answer to so many things. You get three uses out of this one um, before the before uh, you know you don't get to use it anymore. Um, so, but I'm going to put this one, I think it's an S tier. I think this is, yeah, this is one of the best in the game. And, um, I think w at least one person, maybe two, um, should, should have it, uh, on every map, depending on if you're like splitting up or staying together, that kind of thing. I would suggest most people stay together and just let one person have the orbital laser, but that's just me. Um, cause you can run out of uses, um, you know, so just beware of that. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the orbital rail cannon strike. And if I had an S plus tier, I would put this in it. Um, this one is very similar uh, in power to the orbital laser, but it has a different use. Um, this is for when you've got the biggest enemies on the board that you just can't deal with any other way. All right, so I'm talking bile titans. I'm you know talking about uh, big automatons and tanks and stuff like that. Um, chargers, as you can see, and it's just a one hit kill and it's accurate. It hits the biggest thing and never misses. Um, and so uh, also what makes this so powerful though, is not only taking out the biggest opponents on the board, but it's unlimited uses. That's right. You heard me. It's unlimited uses. Check the use limits on the others. This one you can use as often. Well, not as often as you want. You can use it as many times as you want. It does have a 210 second cooldown. Um, but I have just started using this like predominantly in the current meta because of how good it is. All right, next up, Eagle Strafing Run. Um, this is really just a poor man's cluster bomb. Um, I see people killing their uh, own allies with this all the time. It's not completely useless, but it's it's not certainly not better than some of the other things we have out there. Eagle Airstrike, however, this is a, this is a really good one, and you can get it quite early. And so I'm gonna put this one in A tier uh, because uh, you can get it early and just clear out um, if you have a bunch of bugs spawning or um, you have a bunch of, like you have a bot drop or something like that. Um, and uh, you can use this all the way from being a beginning player to a really, really experienced player. So this one is quite excellent. That's why I put it in A tier. Um, next up, we've got the Eagle Cluster Bomb. Um, so this one is probably the best of all the 
types of eagle strikes that we have here. We're at least close to it. I'm, I'm actually gonna put this one in S tier because uh, as you can see here, it's got a, a horizontal line of um, uh, bombs that it drops and it clears everything out within that range there. Really good for taking out swarms. Um, and, and especially smaller targets, like a whole bunch of smaller targets. Uh, probably not going to still do anything against the bigger targets, but if you have something else to deal with it, that's perfectly fine. You also get four uses out of this and only an eight second cooldown, um, which is what makes this one so powerful. All right, next up, Eagle Napalm Strike. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the hell no. <laughs> I just don't think it does uh, enough damage against enemies. Like the video looks good here, but in reality, um, it doesn't like the bugs don't just stand there in real life, right? They run, they run out of the fire and a lot of them just live. Um, but worse than that, people who use this one again, just seem to like drop it on their own allies all the time. And it's another one of these where if you're not paying attention, now it's got all the downsides of the flamethrower, but the flamethrower is amazing, right? It's got all the downsides of the flamethrower, not much of the upside, uh, because you know even if you're dropping it where your allies aren't, they they can be not watching, they could be running away from a swarm, they could get stuck between a swarm and the fire and have to choose to either burn or stand amongst the swarm shooting and and so this is just a hard one to deal with it i i feel like it kills allies more than it kills enemies but maybe that's just me and my experience all right jump pack this one is so overrated um i'm, I'm gonna put it in niche because like i mean i guess if you want to be jumping around there's some maps where getting up high and hunkering down might be okay or getting to difficult areas to reach quickly but there's just so many better backpacks there's almost no reason to use this, but it doesn't hurt you. I think it just wastes the space. That's just my opinion. Next up, we have the Eagle Smoke Strike. I'm also going to rate this one at niche because uh, for this particular one, uh, all it does is hide you. Um, as you can see, the enemies are still shooting at you. They can still hit you. <laughs> Even in their example video here, the guy still gets hit. Um, and this is really more for like a stealth type of build and that's fine if you want to run stealth i actually really like stealth i i run stealth uh, most of the time but there's just better things you could be doing to take out big opponents like what are you going to do if this is taking one of your slots and you get one of the i don't know like bile titans or or tanks or something like that um you have less to deal with with that i mean unless you're really just trying to sneak around the map without killing anything um, but I'm going to put it in niche because you can use this as a stealthy option uh, to kind of hide yourself and lose the enemy um, and, and things like that. Next up, we have the Eagle 110 millimeter rocket pods. Um, I don't know. I just think these are weak. They're, they're accurate. They're more accurate than the other ones, but they're just, they're kind of weak. So I'm, I'm going to put them in C because not useless, but not great. Next up, here's uh, the next uh, probably unpopular opinion. I don't know. Eagle 500k bomb, uh, which which did get nerfed, by the way. So um, I've played with this quite a bit, and that's because I heard about how good it was. I played with it. It seems really good. Look at the effect on the battlefield, just the enormous explosion that occurs because of this. But I'm going to tell you a secret right now. It is more visuals than it is functionality. Um, since it's been nerfed, it doesn't actually seem to deal with the biggest enemies on the battlefield quite as well anymore. In fact, it doesn't often one shot them like you're seeing in this video. You have to kind of double tap them, hit that with, hit them with that, but then hit them with a couple grenades or shoot at it or, you know, add something else to it. But at that point, then why run it, right? Now, here's the other thing. It looks big, but there's actually not a, a gigantic area or not as big of an area as it looks like that it's actually dealing that lethal damage. Um, it's more vertical than it is horizontal as far as damage goes. And there's just not a whole lot of bugs up in the air, right? Now there are some, but, uh, anyway, anyway, it's, it's not doing as much as it looks like, um, especially since it got nerfed, it's got one use. So if you're ever wondering why you can't call in your Eagles, maybe it's because this is being overused by players 
and the Eagles keep going to reload. Um, so uh, for this one, I'm gonna put it in B tier. It does a, a great job um, at the thing it does, but it's very slow and it's not actually doing as much as you think it's doing. Next up, Orbital Precision Strike. I'm actually gonna put this one in A tier. It's one of the first that you get. Um, it's got unlimited uses. Again, hear me on that, unlimited uses. When you get something with unlimited uses in this game, you, you gotta highly consider it. It's also super accurate um, and it can take care of like, especially, it's just really flexible. So it can take care of missions, destroying buildings and bugs and stuff like that, um, big robots, um, whatever you need it to and just call it in as much as you need to. Uh, it's got a cooldown of only 100 seconds, so it's available often. I like this one a lot. It's just, it's not quite S tier, but it's very, very good. The Orbital Gas Strike, um, I'm gonna say oh hell no to that one because uh, I find um, just similar to the Napalm Strike, ugh, people tend to kill their own allies a lot with it. And I actually think the gas is even less effective at killing enemies than the Napalm. Um, next up, we've got the Orbital EMS Strike. Now this one's really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna put this one in B tier because I think it's really good, especially at the end of the match when you're trying to extract and uh, you throw this out there to you know, just basically halt the enemy's march um, and you can easily pick them off at that point. Um, we got the Orbital Smoke Strike. That one is niche like the other smoke. I don't need to talk about smoke any more than I already did, so I'm gonna move on from that. Um, next up, let's talk about the HMG Emplacement. This is just too slow. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say it's niche. If you wanna have fun with that, sure. It's not completely useless, um, but it just, it just rotates too slow for me to think that it's gonna be of any true use. Next up, we've got the Shield Generator Relay. Um, I have to say niche. And I have to say niche because uh, you, we already have a Shield Generator pack that's like this, except it's on your body and you can run around the map with it. This is like a shield generator pack that just stays in one place. Sure, you might be able to use this if you're just trying to stay put um, and you've got extraction, you know, that you're trying to do or something like that, but why not just have the shield generator pack at that point? Next up is the Tesla Tower. <laughs> I, I actually like this more than I think most people like this. I'm gonna put it at C uh, because it's really, really good at taking out um, uh, your enemies like big groups of them as they're coming in like nothing gets by this is what the mines want to be uh, But you have to be really careful where you place it because it will one-shot your allies like they will not survive <laughs> So you gotta like if you're in one of the extermination types of matches, you know the survival ones where you got to take out like four or five hundred bugs or robots or whatever, sure, toss this uh, way to the corner of the map and let it just take out everything that's coming in. Make sure to tell your allies it's there so they don't go running towards it because it will take them out. All right, the anti-personnel minefield. It's it's not even niche. It's an oh hell no. Because you throw this out there and then your teammates just run through it. It kills them. It's sad. <laughs> the supply pack. I don't like this as much as other people. I don't know why it actually gets hyped as much as it does. I, I don't think it's exactly niche. I think, you know, it really does help to keep your team supplied and yourself. Um, it's just that there's other really good backpacks. So uh, this one is not better than those. Next up, the grenade launcher. I really, really like the grenade launcher. Um, and, and I'm having a really hard time deciding if it's A tier or if it's S tier. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the A tier because as I've been playing with it, it takes care of most everything, but not everything. And not that every, not that there's many things in this game that take care of everything. Um, you can't expect that, but I think where things fall into S tier for me is if it's not only good at taking care of the little things, it's, it's good at taking care of the big enemies too. Um, and this one is really, really great at taking care of like little to medium sized enemies, um, even even some armored enemies, but you got to hit them in the right place. Uh, it's just, it is really powerful that it's got like lots of ammo to it. Um, and you can just run around the map doing this and take care of bug nests and the um, automaton factories and such. So really, really, really good weapon, almost S tier for me but just not quite there. 
Next up, the laser cannon. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the B tier uh, because as long as your allies stay out of the way, it can be really, uh, it can be really, really powerful at dealing with big swarms of enemies here. Um, it's a little better than the machine guns in my opinion um, and does a lot of what the machine guns do. Notice because it's a laser cannon and never runs out of ammo and I think that's what makes it a little better to me than the machine guns. It's just like an energy version of those. Next up, incendiary mines. Hell no. <laughs> These are even worse than the anti-personnel mines. Um, and uh, they don't really damage your... Look, I mean, look, these are small... <laughs> these are small enemies that we are looking at there, and they're surviving the mines. Why would you use this? I don't know why you would ever use this. All right, Guard Dog Rover. This is the laser version of the rover. And this one, I'm going to say, is A tier. Um, some people might argue that it should be S tier. I can't put it in the S tier simply because it does way too much friendly fire um, for my liking, but it's really, really good. I, I do like it on those uh, survival missions where you're exterminating your opponents because it does a lot of work and ticks that counter up high quickly. And it's just really, really good at protecting you. Uh, I think a build that's good with this one is, is where your other weapons are primarily meant to take care of the medium to really high level enemies and then you can just let this thing take care of all the little ones so that you don't have to worry about those sometimes you're taking care of the big ones and it's actually the little little ones that come and get you but this will make sure that that doesn't happen all right the ballistic shield backpack hell no this thing just gets in your way it doesn't cover all sides like this is another one that why wouldn't you just use the shield generator backpack that covers all sides right um, and it's heavy and you're like, you can only use a one-handed weapon. I mean, it's just bad. So absolutely not. Next up, the arc thrower. I think I underrated this one at first. Uh, and um, it is a lot better than I thought. And I've been playing with this a lot lately. This is, it, it's something that can basically be used as a primary weapon, not a support weapon. Um, and it takes care of all the little stuff because it, it arcs between the little guys and takes out multiple ones at the same time like you just saw here but also just a couple shots of this to really heavily armored things will take them out too like chargers i can hit a charger four or five times in the head with this thing which is not hard to do and they're dead right so it's actually really easy to use and run around the map with and and i have found that when i'm needed to stay put and be defensive i can uh, really take out lots and lots of enemies without them getting close to me. So I don't even have to worry about um, being swarmed. Because one of my concerns with this weapon was, look how slow it appears to, to shoot. You have to charge it up and then fire it. And some people can't get used to that. But if you just play around with this a little bit and get used to it, you're going to find that this is an S tier weapon. And I have been using it primarily um, since uh, I put it into my main build. All right, next up, we have another brand new stratagem. This is the Quasar Cannon. And this one, ooh, it's still brand new. Um, I think it's almost S tier, but I think that the people who are hyping it like it's S tier are probably just a little too excited about it because it's new. Um, but it's extremely powerful. I mean, it's got unlimited uses because it is a laser cannon, um, but it, it does take a while to charge up and you're committed to it. When you start charging up, um, it's only going to fire when it's fully charged up and it will fire. So like, you're not going to be able to just, you know, pull back and be like, oh, I changed my mind or I want to run away or whatever. So I think it's extremely powerful, but I'm going to put it in the A tier, uh, for right now. Um, but it will take care of all the biggest stuff on the battlefield. That, that seems to be the things that in my mind are making weapons more valuable than not. Um, it, I just wish it were a little bit faster, but then at that point it might, it might be overpowered. Okay, let's look at the shield generator pack. I've been talking a lot about this one. This is S tier. Um, it is the best defense in the game. That's why you see so many people run with this. And you know, like whenever you get bile spewers and such that are, are spewing the poison on you, that like it just bounces right off the shield and, and you can run away and it doesn't, you know, so you can avoid being slowed down and that kind of stuff. Um, this is an amazing, amazing um, uh, stratagem right here. Okay, next up, the machine gun sentry. 
Um, this is uh, this one kills allies a lot. It can be good if you're newer um, and you need something when you're in a defensive posture, but there's better options. One of those being the Gatling Sentry. Um, you can just even see in the video how much more work this is doing. I'm gonna put this in A tier uh, because if you need to extract and you've just got tons of enemies coming at you, um, this will help make sure that you actually get there. I think another A tier is the Mortar Sentry. And um, it, it does just as much work as the Gatling Sentry, uh, but can help against bigger opponents too. And here's the benefit to this one. Uh, you can pop this one up over objects that are in the way, whereas the Gatling Sentry might be hitting walls and rocks and stuff like that. If there's enemies on the other side, the mortar is going to go right over top of those and hit the enemies. Next up is the Guard Dog Rover. Um, I, I personally would just use the Laser Rover if you have a choice, which we all do, right? <laughs> you just play long enough. Um, and, but it's fine. Um, you know, I could put it at C tier, uh, but... Uh, the, the guard dog laser is, is just so much better. Um, okay. Uh, auto cannon sentry. Yeah, this one's awesome, especially against the automatons. Um, I'm going to put this one, I'm, I'm tempted to put it in S tier, uh, but, um, I'm going to put it here in the A tier because it's much better against the automatons than it is against the bugs. So, um, it's not quite as flexible as I would want it to be if I were going to rate it as an S tier. Uh, but, and it's a little bit slower, but as you can see in the videos here, uh, it, it can just take out big guys coming one at a time, one after another, after another. Um, if you have a, a team of players where one person can bring this, one person can bring the mortar, one person can bring the, um, uh, Gatling sentry, um, or some like mix of these, I think you're in really, really good shape. Okay. Next up is the rocket sentry. Uh, and, um, I don't, this is just too slow. This is too slow. So I'm going to put it in niche. Um, it is powerful, but uh, it's not going to be able to handle swarms or really help with that. Um, the EMS mortar sentry, the EMS is just, I think, it, I don't know if it's a little underrated. I think people are starting to discover it, um, but this can be really, really good. I'm going to put this in B tier. Um, this can be really, really good. Uh, just like the, the um, EMS uh, over here too. It's slowing down um, enemies as they're coming in uh, and you're trying to take a defensive posture, right? Uh, or... Uh, if you're trying to attack a base and you want to freeze everybody in place, so you could do this and then drop something big on all of them, right? Uh, okay, lastly, Patriot Exosuit. This is an exciting one. It takes a, a whole lot of points and, and level to get this one, but I think it's way overrated. It looks so cool and it just, I mean, it's got a lot of flexibility. So as you can see, with its own Gatling, um, it can take out a lot of little guys, and then it's got the the missiles to work on big guys. Um, but um, it's it's kind of slow, and like I just like the agility. I like being able to run away when I need to. I like being able to sneak around, um, and and this can get overwhelmed. This piece of equipment can get overwhelmed, and I, I'm not sure if it's a little glitchy or if it's just built in that. Sometimes this thing just explodes for no reason and kills you. Um, so, you know, with all of that said, I'll put it in the B tier just because it is powerful. It is powerful. Don't get me wrong. And it's really, really fun. I, I have a lot of fun using this suit. But it's just not quite good enough. Not, not better than everything that I've put in S and A tier, in my opinion. But this is just my opinion. I'm curious about your opinion. Make sure to tell me in the comments what you agree with, disagree with, that kind of stuff. Correct me. Things are going to change over time too because uh, Arrowhead likes to uh, throw changes out there um, little by little by little. And so as changes happen, I want to know in the comments what you would do differently as they release new things and nerf and boost and things like that and if you enjoy videos like this make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell notification i will catch you in the next one